All right, it's time for Patreon Q and A, Ian. Ian, Ian, how do you access this CU Podcast Patreon? You go to patreon.com slash CU Podcast. You go. Uh, you check it out. You maybe throw us a little money. You get uh, you get poll topics like this. You get more. You, you get, get a more. bonus episode now. Bonus episodes. Full video podcast writings, which I am behind on. I will try to get to that today after work. You get early access. That's right. We're going to start doing the, the, uh, the, the voice messages. will come up, up early there. And I want to thank everyone out there for supporting the Patreon. Uh, the month of September was the, the 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 biggest, big, big, biggest Patreon month ever. Most successful Patreon. So thank you so much. We, we thank you for that. So this week's Patreon poll that you can vote on there as well. In second place, why do Pat and Ian talk about controversial topics? Which is not meaning that if that wins, we won't. It's just you know, the theory around it. Why do we think it's important to talk about that? And in first place, at 78% with the bullet, the worst NES games... Ranked by professionals. So this comes from uh, Seth Abramson, who is a political uh, journalist, a junkie. He was uh, famous uh, for first uncovering uh, the, the Russian collusion stuff. And he spun off and started talking about video games in the past few months. I thought that was funny because he grew up with them. He's a retro gamer. He listens to the podcast. He follows some of the stuff we do. Um, so he, he was nice enough to you know send me the emails and stuff that's, that's usually you have to be a subscriber of his to follow here. And so we're going to talk about this one. Uh, the, the 100 worst NES games, a definitive ranking compiled from over 50 outlets and experts. Proof curated the findings of 52 industry outlets and experts into a single ranking, making this the largest ever consensus list of the worst video game consoles on the world's most beloved gaming console. So I've sent Seth my books before. I'm picturing maybe using uh, websites like Worst of Lists and things like that in order to compile this. And obviously there's a star rating according to the book, which would be helpful as well. Um, so this is from his writing here. Proof has decided to do a deep dive on this question and find out which games deserve the title of worst NES games ever. This result is the first ever worst 100 NES games published by U.S. media outlet. The sources used to compile this consensus ranking range from major outlets, The Guardian, PBS Advice, to industry stalwarts, Games Radar, Gamers, Ultimate Nintendo... Uh, from popular outlets for niche hobbyists, Cracked, Den of Geek, and Gadget, Bleach Report, and Mojo, Mojo, to, uh, they, they, they do compilation lists, to crowdsource data archives and well-regarded fan sites. The World History Project, Ranker, Spoon Shiro, and Fan Pop. So a wide variety of different sorts. Some are, some are like list compilers, some probably more, more erudite, Ian, right there. So we're going to be all tied with 25. We'll work our way down from all 25. We're going to start with... Uh, We'll start with 31, because there's, there's 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 a lot tied with 31. We'll do this last one. WF WrestleMania. Miserable game. Absolutely awful. Uh, controls that are basically... Uh, broken. I, broken. They're broken. They're broken. 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 <laughs> uh, the only good thing about it is the theme music in it, which yes. I think I actually stated in my review. And that's a, a rare developed game. Uh, the Adventures of Gilligan Island, uh, 25th. I do not think this game is that bad, having reviewed it for the guidebook. I think um, the story is, is 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 nice. The mini stories you play, the controls are all right. I would not have ranked this as high as this. I did not give this a terrible rating in the book. It's a Bandai game, right? I believe so. I think it's one of those ones that people just look at and go, it's got to be horrible. They misunderstand it. Yeah. They misunderstand it. Oh, you have to have Gilgan stay close to the to the skipper. It's not, I would not, this would not have made my top 100 worst NES games list. I think I might have given it two and a half or three stars, actually. The Adventures of Rocky and Bullwinkle. It's not, it's not a good game. It's not the worst game, but it's not a good game. Controls are horrible on uh, this game. Awful controls and typical uh, shitty THQ era graphics that look like they should have been on, like, I don't know, a, a computer from 1987. Bill and Ted's excellent uh, video game adventure. I want to put this higher. This might make my top five or six, actually, the more I think about it. Uh, the isometric viewpoint is awful, and dialing anything is just a... Yes. The mini game of dialing, I still don't understand exactly what I'm no, doing. No, it's I'm awful. Doing. Uh, Muppet Adventure, Chaos of the Carnival. Did you review that one? Uh, I might have. I would say this. I don't remember it being miserable. I remember it being very unmemorable. Uh, Simpsons, Bart versus the Space Mutants. <sighs> I, I, it's, been, it's not good. It's not, but it's uh, absolutely not one of the 25 worst games. Uh, I think the first level is actually very interesting with the, you know, you got to hit everything purple. And there's some puzzles, like how you have to use the rocket to get the O in the, the Bolarama sign. Sure. Um, I thought the first level was, while it did not control well, I thought it was a pretty interesting idea. And the rest of the game, had it played like that, could have been interesting. But, but I think in the second, starting in the second level, it just turns into a normal, awful platformer. Yeah. It's just, at that point, you're struggling with the controls. Right. For the most part. 
Uh, these are both wrestling games that are tied. I don't agree with one of these in particular. Tag Team Pro Wrestling and Muscle. Tag so, Team Pro Wrestling is absolutely abysmal. Yeah, that's the one where you use a list to select your move. It's yep. bad. I like Muscle. Once you learn the, the small mechanics, I don't think it's horrible. I tried. It's, I think it's real bad. I, I think it's all right. I got into it. I like I like the power ups. Every there are special moves for the characters. I actually think there's there's the mechanics aren't terrible once you get into that. But I understand if you don't like it. The gra the graphics are are really simple. Extremely. Those are the, those are the little toys. So that they're based on that. Uh, Athena is seventeenth here, tied for seventeenth. The NES version is not good. What? But seventeenth worse? I think that could be. I'd put it in the top fifty. Top fifty, not seventeenth. Yeah. This is one that should have been. Top five, Cheetah Men Two. Yes, I it's, mean it's 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 a broken game. Yeah, it's a broken game. Broken game. Uh, Conan at seventeenth. Did you review that one? I did, and I didn't. I it it, it it controls like shit. It controls like absolute dog shit. But I think I found the game to be kind of interesting once I got to grips with it. How about Hydlide next, tied for 17th? Hydlide is not a great game, but I do kind of like Super Hydlide. I do think that Hydlide. See, this is interesting because he has a difficult games list that I agree with more that mm -hmm. I think he used the same methodology for. But I feel like a lot of these hard NES games, a lot of them are uh, a lot of these worst games. I think a lot of them are misunderstood. High Delight is not great, but it's a, a lot of why people hate it is because they don't know how to play it. It's a port of a PC game. Even if you know how to play it's... High Delight, yeah, it's not amazing. But I think people bought it and thought it was supposed to be like a Zelda and they don't sure. get it and they turn it off immediately because they go, haha, this game sucks without trying to sure. approach the game on its, its own terms. It's more misunderstood. Yes. Uh, Little Red Hood. I almost say maybe you shouldn't put all these unlicensed games on here because you'd be you tons of these ones. So then you have Little Red Hood, which I haven't played a lot. Operation Secret Storm, I, I reviewed. That's bad. Mi miserable, but all the Color Dreams games are miserable for the most part. I mean, yep. how... Then you get to one that I think is more misunderstood. This to me is more hard than worse. Silver Surfer. Silver Surfer, I think, technically is all right of a game. It is punishingly hard as a shooter, but it's not impossible. It's not impossible. It's not. I, but it is, it is unfair. I, I will say that. I don't like it because uh, shooters are allowed to be hard. I play plenty of shooters that are extremely difficult. Some that are more difficult than Silver Surfer. My problem with Silver Surfer is that the hitbox is freaking massive. Yeah, I wouldn't put it on the worst because the, the music is fantastic. The graphics are pretty good. It's just like the difficulty is just too much on that. I like the fact that it's vertical and, and, and horizontal. That wouldn't make my, my worst NES games. Uh, this one may or may not, depending on my mood, uh, usually it's a shooter according to Rue. Back to the Future at number 12 tied. Uh, I have a weird fondness for, for how wacky this game is and the mini games involved, where I don't think this would make my top 20 worst NES games. I actually didn't no, give it a horrible review. I don't think it would for me either. If you look at... It's all I think about... Uh, it, a expectations? Lot of it's, it's about expectations. Yeah. If you look at Back to the Future as any arcade game, if this had been released in the arcade, slightly better graphics, I think it would... Um, you know... Uh, better difficulty scaling. I think it, I don't think it would have been looked frowned upon um, because it is an arcade game structure. You dodge stuff and then you get mini games and sure. it's the mini games aren't awful in theory. Uh, collision detection is not great on some of it. There are some problems just based with like, like on the actual coding, but the game itself is decent in theory. Um, ties itself to the movie well enough. Yeah. Uh, my biggest problem is that it's absolutely fucking grating to listen to. Yeah, I didn't give it a horrible review. I didn't give it a glowing review, but no. The next one though, I, I it was Back to the Future two and three. That's more miserable. Oh, those are awful. That's more miserable. Bad Street Brawler, really bad game. Yeah, uh, Barbie. Barbie is one that Barbie's interesting though. Barbie is one. Yes, it's interesting. But when you look at it, okay, this is for maybe little little kids, little girls to play. Uh, that they marketed to. I try to, to grade on that scale, and it's still bad. So it's still bad. Writer for uh, the books, um, Christina, he does, uh, she speed runs that game. She did, uh, the original one? Yeah. Did not know that. I think she did all the, the Super Nintendo. She did the Super Nintendo review. Uh, Bible Adventures at eight. You know what? I should be at 12th tied. I, I think there's a couple of the Bible Adventure games that are actually decent out of, out of the set. That's more of a one based upon reputation. Right. And that's, again, it's reputation yeah. and haha, -ha, these Bible games exist. Uh -huh. and, I mean, that is funny. But uh, honestly, they're not, uh, uh, of like the unlicensed games, they're not the worst. No. 
They're not the worst. No, the, the, the wisdom tree ones actually, by and large, are better than most of the color dreams ones when you get into oh, it. Oh, absolutely. Like, like Exodus absolutely. and Joshua, the, like the overhead uh, puzzle. Spiritual Warfare, yeah. the Zelda clones, yeah. they all play better than most of the um, unlicensed games. Uh-oh. We, we ha- now we have a bunch of movies, a couple of uh, Hudson Hawk at, at 10. It's bad. Then, uh, not 10 bad, but it's bad. And then Total Recall, which is always kind of lumped in because they're both like weird R-rated movies. Yeah. That got weird. Yeah. They're not great. Hudson Hawk had interesting ideas. Uh, I always like to try to point that out during like the marathons. The first level incorporates like weird stealth stuff. Um, it controls like shit, but definitely not the 10th worst game on the system. This one I would put higher. I put this in the top two or three. Dragon's Lair is miserable to play. Oh, it is. And the fact that. And it's it, not broken. It's just miserable it's to play. It's designed to be miserable yes. to play. It's designed to be miserable. And it's like, we want to make it as torturous as going through the arcade. Well, they didn't have to. They could have made like a little platformer. Yeah. A little platformer. You hit a guy, you know, use your sword to hit little creatures. And everyone would have been probably fine with that. And to have these like one hit death things like the arcade just did not translate, obviously. That would probably uh, be my top one or two, the more I think of it. It's very bad. Uh, Super Pitfall. Some people don't like it. I never got into it. It's a bad game, but again, I think this is reputation and people wanted like a real Super Pitfall. I mean, sure. Pitfall 1 and 2 are fun, great fucking games. It's almost games, like it shouldn't have been And marketed. Super Pitfall looks like, I mean, I don't even know how it got that name. Well, it's Pitfall Harry, I guess, technically. But, uh, and it like Mario. Yeah, I don't know about that level. It's bad. But not, it's tied for 8th? Eh, probably not. Uh, Ghostbusters tied for 6th. Yeah, Ghostbusters is bad. The NES version's real yeah. bad. I tried to like it. So I like the Atari. This version. one should be higher. Where's Waldo? Also tied with Ghostbusters. Where's Waldo? Absolutely. Where's Waldo is probably my least favorite. Okay, for me, I think I I, get, I gave Dragon's Lair a bomb. I think in the book, only two games got a bomb. I gave Dragon's Lair a bomb. I mean, I could have given it a half star on a, on a good day, but that game was just miserable to get through the first even few screens. For a person like me who's colorblind, Waldo is oh, okay. literal pain. Like okay. it's yeah. impossible to get through. But that even game. you know, you can't tell what Waldo when you click on him. It's like wow, I, I still can't see him. Like I don't I don't see him still. Uh, there's no detail in it. Deadly Towers. I think that gets a bad rap. Uh, Deadly Towers. I don't think it's fourth, the worst <sighs> tied. Deadly Towers uh, is 100% not the fourth worst game. And while I loved reading Sean Baby uh, he in said, my youth, he said he put it as his worst one. Sean Baby was the person who started the whole. This Deadly is Towers game. is the worst game ever. It's got fine music. Yes, it's weird. You're fighting blobs and slinkies and essentially, but it's really not that awful of a game it's just unremarkable um the next one i super disagree with it's just a more difficult game friday 13th is not the four, fourth worst worst nes game absolutely not absolutely not no it has any it, the ideas present in friday the 13th are good enough to just keep it out of the top 25 and the controls are all right it's just that people the map don't sucks yeah the map sucks that's it the map sucks uh, and getting to where you need to be is oftentimes far harder or more yeah. impossible than it needs to be. It's not a great game in its current execution, but it's got great ideas that I think automatically disqualify it from a top 10 or top 20. Uh, yeah, honestly, if you just improved the map and the navigation, it might have been a beloved I'm, game. I'm, I'm still, oh, it would have been. I'm still waiting for someone to take it and just do it right because I think the skeleton of that game is very, very sure. good. And the music's good. The different characters. I, yeah, there's something there. It's, it's, it's one of the only dark NES games where it's like a horror. Yeah. Um, Action 52. Absolutely. This yes. is number three. Like This is where like no one's going to have an argument with these top three. Uh, for the, for some of them, I, the the one might be a little controversial. Actually, this number one I think is probably going to be a little tough for me. But go, go for it. Uh, but but you won't get a lot of arguments. But. Yeah. Action 52 is just broken. Yeah. It's absolutely broken. That's why I'm surprised like Cheetah Man isn't bundled with this, but Action 52 is worse because you get all these broken games that like should never have been published. We know why. There were high school kids that learned how to code like in a week and a half or whatever and made these games like in a month or whatever it was. It was, it was, it was nuts. Uh, number two, un, the Uncanny X-Men. Um, this definitely makes my top 10. I don't have a problem putting number two. You can beat this game. That's the thing. Like I, I like to say, can you beat these games? Is that yes? You can beat Uncanny X. Oh, Uncanny X Men would probably. I, I it's would, miserable. I'm though. fine putting it at two. Oh no, it's a, it's bad. It's a miserable. miserable I gave it. Game. A, I gave it a half star. I talk. I, uh, I yeah. I think I actually mentioned this on extra napkins. It wasn't on here, but I, I know it was within the past two weeks. I mentioned that um, X Men was the only rental game uh-huh. I ever rented where I was like, no, I'm good. Yeah, it's. I it's played bad. it for like half an hour. and I was like, no, I'm gonna go outside. And number one. 
drum roll, made famous by ABGN, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Oh, um, I, I was looking at, yeah, the list got sent to me all weird. But uh, I don't have a lot of experience with Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. It's a bad game, sure. It's an interesting concept. I, th- I think it's misunderstood. Yes, you walk way too slow as Dr. Jekyll. Your cane does nothing. But there's like a deep there's like a deeper message about being bothered by everyday life that's in there. I think that I think they set out to do something more ambitious that the NES couldn't do, sure. potentially. But there's quirky stuff in it, like different bees that attack you. I would not put this number one. I would put I would put Action 52 number one uh, or Dragon's Lair number one personally. This would probably be in the top ten. I would not put this number one though personally. Yeah, there's no. enough interesting things going on around it. Uh, versus something like actually the two where there's nothing interesting going on. You X know? Men might truly be my X Men will be your number one versus ver, or, or, or versus Dragon Slayer. I those would be the, are the top two. If you put two in front of me and uh, said I had to pop one in the system right now and try to mess with it, I would pick Dragon Slayer just because I think their design decisions I, in Dragon Slayer are bizarre. But I want to see the other screens. I don't ever need to play X Men on the Nintendo ever again. My worst ones are in no order. I would do X Men, Cheetah Men Two, Action Fifty Two, um, Where's Waldo? Oh, and Where's Waldo? And, Dra- and Dragon's Lair. Those would be my five. That's my five. In whatever order you want to do, like that's those are the ones I got either a bomb or a half star in the book. And there are other like color ones I got a half star, but again, those weren't official games. So like those got past Nintendo. You know, right. a lot of these some of these bad ones. Yeah, like, where's Waldo got past Nintendo? I don't want to take the time to think of a top five, but I would say where's Waldo and X Men would probably be where's Waldo, X Men, and Dragon's Lair would probably be my top three. All right, thanks Seth for the list, and we'll probably cover more of your list in the future.